Adric, Jeremy Vittarioni, a household name here on the SCG Tour. These two heavyweights going at it in our quarterfinals. And, and that was a picture of Matt smiling. Yes, that is as happy as Matt <laughs> ever is. <laughs> so I told you we needed uh, entrance music, a little hype music. Right. Changed my mind. You don't want it anymore? You're done with it? No, we need the hype man, like in wrestling. I could attempt that one of these times. I feel Let's like... Let's get ready to... Right, Mike. Shuffle, shuffle, magic. shuffle works. Or it, it, that guy's brother does it for the uh, the MMA. Right, right. So it's Michael Buffer, and then who's the other Buffer? Bruce Buffer. Those are the two Buffers. Look at you. I have a lot of Buffer knowledge. It turns Seriously. out. Seriously, I wasn't sure I was going to get that one when we started this conversation. But, but it yeah, did come I, I just need someone just screaming into a microphone. Right. Getting the fans at home hyped for this. Well, if you watch the Mythic Invitational, there was like the, the pyro and the fireworks display. And I keep telling Cedric, Cedric, if there's one thing our tournament series is lacking, it's fireworks indoors. I just feel like if we were just shooting them off indiscriminately, yeah. the excitement would really be taken up a notch. I'm sure we don't need any extra insurance or anything like that no, for it. No. no, no, no. We are trustworthy individuals ready to handle <laughs> our fireworks. <laughs> Pyrotechnics. Yes. <laughs> You have a lot of training in that field? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I, w I watched it on TV once. I've, I used to watch a lot of wrestling. All right. There's a lot of pyrotechnics there. I think they've taken away pyrotechnics in recent years. I don't know if that qualifies me or not. Yeah, no, I, I think that's basically a doctorate. Uh, I, I do have a law degree, and I'm not using that right now. Maybe I can look at just getting that transferred into, like, a pyrotechnics degree instead. There's got to be some correlation between the two. I have to think it carries over in some way. Well, maybe it's just a whatever it costs you to get your degree, mm -hmm. you're allowed to exchange it for a degree that costs less. That seems totally fair to me. Yeah. I mean, I basically have open field on all degrees right now, but... Uh, yeah, most of them, right? I might have found a flaw in the system. I really well, I don't know if you'd end up with a medical degree at this point. Okay, that's true. That is true. Players still shuffling up here. And I don't mean to belittle the pyrotechnics field. I have no idea what it would take to become qualified in that, that type of position. Uh, hey, look, I, that's a far more dangerous job than I've ever hold. I would rather have someone imminently qualified do that than a clown like me. So, You know, I'm down for a clown like you. Okay. <laughs> Craig's throwing caution to the wind. Has given me my pyrotechnics license. I'm here for it. Tarioni taking a peek at the seven. Handing it down the line. <laughs> he just passed his whole hand to a teammate. Asking for permission to keep. Seeing stuff like this. When team events first started popping up in the competitive scene, mm -hmm. the rules couldn't were so oppressive. Couldn't talk, right? Well, even so, for a while you weren't allowed to talk, and then they're like, you know, what, what's the point of a team event if you if you can't talk? Mm -hmm. So then you were allowed to talk, but you were not allowed to touch your opponent's cards at any point. Okay. You were not allowed to touch their life pad or their pen. Okay. And you would get game losses for these things. Right. It was a wild world. I think there is a lot more fear of cheating and probably a lot more cheating back in those times. Certainly people had to be on constant watch for those type of shenanigans. And adding two more people to the mix gave the people looking to exploit an edge even more fodder to take advantage of. Yeah, I'm just so glad that we've moved past that. Absolutely. Where, where that's not the, the, the specter over all of our events. Absolutely. Those were dark times. Things much better in the world of magic these days. Looks like Matt Nass going to go ahead and take a mulligan here. And it's funny to me that things were that strict and serious. Mm -hmm. And then there were things like a two-headed giant pro tour. Right. <laughs> like the contradiction there is just so absurd. You're saying there is some mixed messaging. Yeah. Okay. Well, that is very interesting. A two-headed giant pro tour would be sweet, though. I mean, we could just do that again. Why not? We cannot do that again. Come on. How about a brawl pro tour? I, I th you heard it here first. Brawl I in the Players' Championship. Get ready for it. I don't even know. Like, like I want to say something, <laughs> but I don't even know how to respond to that. Because, I mean, Watsy will just take up that torch and run with it. Let's do it. I'm here for it, man. I, I lived through a double elimination pro tour. Nice. That's fun. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It was awkward. Fun for me. Here's a Gilded Goose from Matt Nass, the ideal 
turn one play for Simic Midrange. What's your sense of this Golos Fires deck? What has it gained? What has it lost by picking up the Fires package? Um, so obviously the, the point of the Fires is to just be able to do multiple very powerful things every turn. Doesn't this deck already do that, Craig? No, there's a lot of times where, where you tap out and use all of your mana, say, to deploy a, a Krasis. Okay. And you immediately get to do something else powerful on that turn as well. Okay. Point taken. Here's a growth spiral from Bertarioni to answer. Matt Nass's Oko. Turn to Oko. That's a powerful play. And I, I think a, a another significant note here is that we're looking at a deck with four Fey of Wishes. Mm-hmm. So you immediately get to tutor for something with Fey of Wishes, not using your mana, and then immediately cast that thing, not worrying about what its mana cost is. Well, let me slow you down with the immediately, because on the Fire's turn, you've already cast your yeah, Fires. Sure. Uh, obviously, the turn the Fires comes down, you only get one more spell. Right. But from there on from out there in the on. game... Absolutely. The, and the if you're doing the tutor package with Fey of Wishes, or, uh, yeah, Fey of Wishes, you end up with extra cards in your hand, that you get to use the discard of the Fae of Wishes, rebuy it into your hand, right. and then repeat the process. That's one of the things I really like about Fae of Wishes in Golos in general. And my take right now is I think the Bant versions need to start exploring it as well. You have so many resources that it's very easy for you to get multiple uses out of that Fae of Wishes. You're happy to pitch some cards in the late game and get exactly what you need from your sideboard. With a well-built sideboard, it feels like in the late game, the world is absolutely your oyster. Yep. Meanwhile, how about a result from our legacy match? Zan Syed up a game against Andrew Beckstrom already. That was quick. That was real quick. I bet that involves some 2020 shenanigans. Maybe Ren and Six lock as well. That's another possibility. I would guess a 2020. Yeah. Big old Jerry T. Probably. Matt Nass getting aggressive with that turn to Oko. It's going to make an elk out of its food. Second Gilded Goose coming down. The yeah. goose is loose, baby. It's very loose. We're going to tighten up this goose. It, it's funny seeing Nass kind of have this optimal draw where he gets to play a turn two Oko. Mm -hmm. And we, it, it, to me, it feels like he's just behind. It's going to get outscaled quick. Yeah, the, the opponent already has a six, six lands with the Field of the Dead on, on the battlefield. Yep. Access to Hydroid Crisis. I saw a Growth Spiral in hand. Bunch of options here for Batarioni. You know, I talked a lot about Harlan Freer, Dylan Donegan. I didn't really mention Jeremy Batarioni sitting at fourth place on our leaderboard as well. Right in the thick of it. So many ringers in this top eight. So many people really looking to cement their position atop the leaderboard. Zach Allen in 11th place presently. Zan Syed in 14th place presently. Of course, Harlan Freer, our points leader, also in this top eight. <laughs> Dylan Donegan, third place in this top eight. It's kind of absurd. Yeah, absolutely stacked field. Good players doing well in team events. All right, I'll make one final point on this fires of invention until mm -hmm. I think of another point to make. Okay. <laughs> but uh, seriously, uh, Jeremy's shown up with uh, multiple copies of Kenrith in his deck. Right. And with the fires, you always have extra mana available because you're not using it to cast your spells. So that's a, a little deck building synergy there to have uh, a, a powerful creature with a bunch of different activated abilities to put your mana into. Sounds good to me. Meanwhile, we are going to see our first adventure it's Fay of Wishes, and Jeremy gets to go to the sideboard. I just roasted Jerry T. We were recording some pack openings of those flashy collector's boosters. We, uh, we did our top tens list, and I had Fay of Wishes in my honorable mentions. I thought I could do a lot. Jerry called it an unplayable magic card. Completely unplayable. That's so funny to me. I disagreed. I disagreed very hard. Of course. And while I do think Fires is pretty important to maximizing this card, I have been so impressed with it, I'm starting to explore it in non-Fires lists as well. I think it might just be a strong magic card, and it's bonkers with Fires. 
Yeah, w when I think of the history of the, these wish cards that we've had in Magic previously, this one is so much more versatile. Yeah. There's just so little restriction to this card, and then the ability to loop it using it several times throughout a game just makes it a very, very powerful effect. Absolutely is, Greg. How about the fact it's a 1-4 flyer, too? That's not irrelevant. It is strange to me. It, its power-toughness ratio to its converted mana cost is strange to me when, obviously, the powerful part of the card is tutoring. Yeah, you, you say that, but that's not even concrete, given how good a 1-4 flyer can actually be. That's why it's strange to right. me. It, they made this difficult to deal with. Right. Why, why, why is this not a 1-2 so that at least the opponent can try to kill it and break up the loops. Oh, now it blocks very efficiently. It sticks around for the late game. I mean, breaking up the loop is challenging anyway. If you never leave your shields down, you can always return Fey of Wishes at instant speed. Sure. The, yeah, the thing is when they go to return it, mm -hmm. that's when you have to kill it. Sure. Like, it, it's pretty rare that they have enough mana up and enough cards in their hand to do this multiple times. Oh, fair enough. But at a, like, like you're saying, at a 1-4, it's hard to get this thing off the board. It really is. Field of the Dead online for Batarioni. Nas trying to mount some offense via that Oko. But just a strong start from Batarioni here. Even lacking fires. No problem for Batarioni. And I think that's the key to building good fires decks. Your deck needs to function equally well with and without it. It's a Brazen Borrower on a zombie token from Matt Nass. Ooh, there's a little double block. Mm hmm Nass going to break that one up. Make some additional food. And that's an interesting line, making a food instead of an elk. Well, it lets him cast the Brazen Borrower here. I was going to say, it makes me think he's interested in the mana. Yeah. I mean, it might be Brazen Borrower. It, it, it might be a five drop in his hand. Let's see what the play is. We're going to head back over to Bertarioni's side. Field of the Dead. That's a good one. That's a decent draw. Yeah, you talk about these decks needing to be good when they're not doing their wish thing. Mm -hmm. And the Golo, that's, that's precisely the Golo stack, right? It's like... Sometimes I'm just doing something absurd, and even when I'm not, I'm just ramping up my mana, getting zombies along the way. Yeah. Sounds like a pretty good game plan to me. Tari only going to go ahead and crack Fabled Passage. That's going to bring with it two more zombies. Forest onto the battlefield. Yeah, he needs the second green source to cast the casualties of war here. Casualties of war is going to kill a lot of things if it is cast. Many things will die. Yes, but not all the things. Not all the things. Many things. One more black source. There it is. That's what I mean. There's no fires, and this deck can still cast Casualties of War if it wants. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. All right. Taking out a bunch of food, taking out lands, taking out Oko. Pretty good magic card. Looks like the goose generating some mana in response. All those things hit the bin. <laughs> oh, how absurd is this? Nass went from just this great board to not being able to attack again, potentially for the rest of the game. Yeah, Batarioni deploys Fae of Wishes. 1-4 lines up pretty good against 3-1 of Brazen Borrower. Why is it a 1-4? <laughs> Nass is going to spend some mana... And yeah, with the Fae of Wishes on the board, he said, I'm not going to... Yeah, why bother? Yeah. Just going to go ahead and make some food, is Nass. All right, here's six mana tapped. Krasis for four. Bertarioni says, that's cute. 
I would make like a Crocodile Dundee reference, but there's no way anyone watching gets that. If you're one of the people who would have gotten that reference, just pretend like I made it. That's not a knife. We'll share a moment together. If Craig gets it. <laughs> That's from the second one. Okay. Crocodile Dundee in New York. Yep. Lost in New York, is Lost, it? Uh, who knows what Crocodile Dundee gets up to these days. <laughs> Zombie time. Four zombies rumble into the red zone, shamble into the red zone, if you will. <laughs> yeah, we're at that point in the game where it, it looks kind of inevitable from the Golo side, right? His life total is still so high. He Even like, let's say, a questing beast off mm -hmm. the top, he can afford to take two swings eight points twice, and he's just going to have this huge zombie army pressuring the opponent on the way back. Right. Zombies for days. Still plenty of plays left as well. Yeah, and it looks like it's time for a deafening clarion. Just clean up all of NASA's things. Fay of Wishes just hanging out happily. Four more mana tapped. Fay of Wishes again I just want to thank Jeremy for illustrating my point because he's not doing fire stuff. He's doing face stuff, and yep. it looks great. It looks real good. And, and it will get shared <laughs> summons. <laughs> I would love to take a look at shared summons. Yeah, we'll call that one up. Just like Matt Nass. Really want to see what that card is going to do. It's a powerful one. For Jeremy. There you see shared summons. Two green, three colorless, instant. Search your library for up to two creature cards with different names. Reveal them. Put them into your hand. Shuffle your library. Go get Krasis, Kenrith, maybe more Fae of Wishes. Who cares? You can get whatever you want. Hey, don't leave our Boreal Grazer out of the loop Our Boreal here. Grazer, yeah. Beanstalk Giant. Don't get Beanstalk Giant. And that is going to prompt a concession from Nass, and that means Jeremy Bertarioni up a game. Things looking good for the team of Syed. Yepin and Batarioni. Let's talk sideboarding, Craig. It's interesting on Batarioni's side. If there is a huge flaw with this Golos Fires deck, it is this. It is the sideboard is almost non-functional. It's a bunch of wish targets, and that means you don't have the options that all the other Golos decks generally have access to. Although, having those cards in your game ones is worth quite a bit, I will say. And, and he still has access to this whole sideboard sure. in games two and three. Sure. It's just, just through wishes. Just slower. And one of the points that comes up over and over is that we don't like it when people over sideboard. Yeah. A lot true. of these decks need to do what they do. Uh, what are you going to cut from the Golos decks in general? You do a lot of trimming. Exactly. You, you trim grazers. You trim once upon a time in some instances. Uh, but sometimes crisis. In general, though, there's not a lot of, oh, I hate this card in this matchup. Exactly. Get it out. Yep. And so I, uh, you know, I think in a matchup where the Planeswalkers are just super important, We'll see these two Agent of Treachery come into the deck. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just leave everything else as wish targets. Oh, I think that's exactly right. Meanwhile, over on Matt Nass's side, you see four Shifting Ceratops, three Love Struck Beast, three Ether Gust, three Veil of Summer, and two Mystical Disputes. How far down the rabbit hole does Matt Nass want to go? He's played against Golos decks a lot this weekend, for sure. He knows what he wants to do in this matchup. How do you see his plan going, Craig? So th this is kind of a tough one. Um, it, it's important for Nass to get on the board and pressure the opponent. We saw that game how just playing this, this mid-ish game strategy just gets his doors blown off. Right. So he's got to get down on the board quick and then disrupt his opponent from there. Uh, so that being said, I don't like a card like Veil of Summer. Even if you think Agent of Treachery is coming, mm -hmm. you need a card that's a little more proactive than that. I, I, so I, I think... I like the Ether Gust. It's a potential time walking. It's all of the ramp spells. But maybe not three of them. It, it's tough because these Golos decks don't really have holes that give you an angle to attack them effectively. Right. There's not one specific thing that they're doing where you're like, oh, I'll just stop this thing and then I'll be able to win. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I, I think that's why it's the best deck in the format presently. Yeah. So it's super difficult to sideboard against those decks. You know, to your point with Veil of Summer... If the card isn't coming in here, it's like, what is it really 
doing? Like, why does it? Why is it in this deck whatsoever? Because I talked a lot about how Teferi from the Bant Golos decks really puts opponents in the grinders, yep. and it's very hard to play reactive cards like Veil of Summer. But here's a spot where it has the potential to shine against something like an Agent of Treachery. I don't know. I mean, I, it just depends how big you think that effect is. Because quite frankly. That's it. It's not doing anything else in this matchup. It's all about countering Agent of Treachery. And I think if that's the case, I'm probably passing on it as well. But yep. then I have to question the effect effectiveness of this card in the sideboard. And does it deserve three sideboard slots? So I, I think one of the things... Th the, the short answer there is probably no. Right? But one of the things... Coming into this weekend, we're in week one. I don't think everyone knew that Golos Fair enough. would be... 60% of the winner's metagame or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. it, it, it was just under 50%. But th that being said, you, you still have cards in your sideboard that are for other matchups. Moving forward, maybe you don't even do that anymore. Right. Yeah, this is very easy to question in hindsight, but coming into this tournament, you want to pair for everything. I mean, it's day one of New Standard. Yep. We can't overemphasize that. You don't know exactly what's going to be prominent. You don't know what you're going to be facing. You need to have answers for everything. So you, it makes sense in that context. Yeah, you get paired against Shaheen Sarani right. in the Swiss rounds. Right. You, you love having these Veil of Summers. No, great point, Craig. Well, if you are itching to play more Magic... After watching the SCG tour this weekend, there's no better place to get involved than the SCG regional championships. Again, I am thinking about chartering a plane, flying out to the East Coast for the SCG regional championships. Of course, there's so many great benefits that come with the championships. There is this exclusive play mat and tokens, the first 200 players at every single regional location and there's a bunch of them bunch of places to play regional championships Let's take a look at those tokens we're going to be giving out there you see it echoing the playmat and also the colin roundtree token of course our invitational winner colin roundtree and his servo token going to be available at regionals and regionals is no joke craig there's money on the line i i play in regionals every year mm -hmm. and i will be this year too and if i win i will break even on the trip and i am super excited about it i will recoup that twelve hundred dollars i spent on plane ticket and hotel I'm sure it's much easier for you folks on the East Coast. You have no excuse for not attending this tournament. You need to be at regional championships. And you see the locations there. Look, you can go all the way out to Chicago and play regional championships. That's not a bad flight for me. I could do that one. Dallas, Madness Comics going to be hosting regional championships. If you're around the Northeast like you are, Craig, you can go to Kerwin's Game Store in New York. I've been to Kerwin's a bunch. All right, I'll be at the Bearded Dragon in Burnersville. Okay, Craig keeping it in New Jersey, as always, the Bearded Dragon. For Craig, there's Magelings in Columbia, Gamers, Geekery in Tavern, Durham, NC. All of these places, great places to play Magic. Star City Games Regional Championships, October 19th. Of course, in the modern format, go.starcitygames.com slash regionals for more information about that. You, you say you'll recoup the cost of the flight in the hotel room? Right. I mean, if you just start out hitchhiking, Ooh. You, know, you, you save yourself a boatload okay. of money there. Okay. Just and... Uh, Craig's got a sofa. So I'm hitchhiking to Craig's house for yeah. regionals. Crash anytime you want. Plan has been formulated. You get to sleep with some cats? Beautiful. I do love cats. My wife very allergic to cats, so I don't get much cat in my life. So I mean, all I'm hearing is more reasons yeah, to is, do this. This is all upside. Yeah. When do you think I have to start hitchhiking to make it to your house in time for regionals? Because this is coming up. Oh, I have no idea. I, I would never hitchhike anywhere. Oh. Well, you got me very excited, and now you've dashed my dreams, as no, usual. I, this is definitely a good idea for you oh. to do. It's not, just not for me, Brian. Okay. Okay. I see how it is. Paradise Druid from Matt Nass. Just some tap lands over on Bertarioni's side. Forest into Boros Guildgate. And we, we want to see Nass come down with a questing beast here. Right. Something aggressive. Some way to seize the initiative in this matchup. I see an untapped land. Does he have the powerful four drop? He does. Questing Beast comes down. Four points of damage. And I want to point out, Questing Beast can be answered with a Wrath effect from most of these Golos decks. Batarioni, only one time wipe, three deafening clarions. Yep. Not answering that Questing Beast. And uh, it's worth noting, Bertarioni has a little less ramp than some of the other decks do as well. Mm -hmm. No once upon a time either, smoothing out those draws. So 
that's the reason I thought the questing beast was so important that turn because he has more draws that are a little slower and clunkier where you can really take advantage of that. Yeah, I think you're right. Well, Charioni did find some ramp. It's Beanstalk Giant. It's going to go get an untapped basic. But the beats are coming fast and furious. Charioni shocked as well to be able to play that on this turn. So at 14 life, six points of power over on NASA's side. At least six points that we know of. Maybe Paradise Druid makes a Nissa too? Yes, oh. it does. And, and this is the draw, right? Where Absolutely. Yeah, you say the, the goalless decks don't interact until turns kind of four or five. So I'm just going to come down super aggressive. I'm going to go wide, and I'm going to beat them up that way. Seven points of damage headed Bertarioni's way. And now, and definitely Clarion doesn't even save him. Is there an answer available in Bertarioni's hand to this furious onslaught from Matt Nass? See Clarion in hand. Has a Fey of Wishes. That can't block Questing Beast. Scoops him up. Matt Nass takes game two. Yeah, with, with, with no one drop to help you accelerate, you're really leaning super hard on Growth Spiron too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that might be okay. You know, waiting until turn three to ramp with your Beanstalk Giant, it might be okay in some of the matchups. But Nass has shown up with a pretty aggressive deck here that can punish people for doing that. Yeah, Nass with his most aggressive possible draw there. Very, very happy to see that on his side of the battlefield. And yeah, if Pretorioni's deck has holes, it's against aggressive decks for sure. Arb Arboreal Graves are gone from the list. Deafening Clarion looking to recoup some of those points lost by having to turn three Wrath. But if the sizing is proper, you can skirt that. Wait, Matt it, Nass telling you how to do it. It's both the sizing and the variety of threats, right? Because yep. the Deafening Clarion... Deafening Clarion is never going to get a Planeswalker off the board. Right. So if you're saying, hey, one of my threats that you need to interact with is this Planeswalker, the Clarion's not going to get the job done. No, exactly right, Craig. Craig, I've used this setup before, but I want to see if you were paying attention when I did so. Do you know what one of my favorite things on the planet to do is? Foils! Buying magic cards, Craig. Foil, non-foil, beta, alpha. I'll buy them all. I don't care. Nailed it. And the card I love to buy more than any other... Thought Vessel, my absolute favorite magic no card way. to buy, which is perfect given the current I Star can't City believe it. Sale. it lined up perfectly. Yeah, things such as Pyromancer Ascension, Thought Vessel, Didion Spellbook, Rest in Peace, and Dark Steel Plate. Head over to go.starcitygames.com slash sale to see what's on sale this week. I wasn't real happy with the way the... Uh Jace's spellbook cards and the Gideon spellbook cards turned out. I was I wasn't a fan. Some people like them. I, I'm glad that there's products that different people have different opinions on. Right. It's just the color schemes on them did not do anything for me. Okay. I was just thinking. I'm going to pick up some foil brainstorms, and I'm thinking about which ones I want to pick up. And I was looking at the Jace's spellbook foil brainstorms, and I couldn't get myself to pull the trigger. I couldn't say exactly why. Like I thought I liked them, but for whatever reason, I was just like, uh, I don't think this is what I actually want. Maybe I have the same trepidation you do about those spellbook designs. Just go masks. Aren't masks like super expensive? Yeah, I mean, uh, what's two two hundred dollars each or something? I it's don't know. It's one banana, Michael. What could it possibly cost? Says Craig. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the references—they're coming fast and furious. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens as we get to the, the end of the day. Oh, I love it. Early on in the day, I'm like, I need to make sure this, this cast is tailored to everyone no who could way. possibly be watching. You should definitely be hitting us with the Arrested Development uh, references early in the day. Just dive right into it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. When we head to Atlanta. Atlanta. In Hot a few Atlanta. weeks. That is our next stop. You and I headed to Atlanta. I'll just go immediately hard into the references. I'll keep up. Good. Good. You know, Craig, you claim to not know pop culture, yet when I drop a reference, they mostly hit with you. Well, th see, it's funny because we're both old men. Right. Okay. So <laughs> it's just that I don't know pop culture either, and yeah. I don't realize it. Uh, no, our pop cul culture references are all from 15 years ago. Gotcha. That makes sense. So y your sweet spot and my sweet spot line up very well. That makes sense. It's all clear to me now. And I will stop talking about our sweet spots mm, Yeah. lining up. We'll save that for Atlanta as well, I guess. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, a game apiece between Batarioni and Matt Nass. No other results to report after that extremely fast game one of Legacy. Yeah, it's a little weird. I would have thought one of these... Uh, what do you think is going on in that Urza outcome match Yeah, I, right I would now? have thought someone would just run away with it. But there are times... I, I don't... So... Yeah, can we get a sneak peek of this Urza outcome mirror? Just real... Okay, get away. Get away! No, that's... I don't want to see that ever again. That, that game's going to end real quick. I don't want to see that ever again. I don't even want to talk about that. So that, that game... What was happening, Craig? Well, you wouldn't let me look <laughs> no, long enough to find out. No, that's terrifying. <laughs> look, I have lived through the Golos mirrors this weekend. It's I'm funny. The zombies don't seem to bother you at all. Well. But, but a field of servos and uh, thopters? I, th I mean, that was intense even in the face of this weekend. That was, that was a lot, Craig. I, I love it. But yeah, I would have thought one of these decks would do its thing before the other deck. And yeah, you just assume someone goes off hard enough to just win on the yeah, spot. Sure. I guess not, though. Yeah, when the Wurza decks were a little more controlling, there would be times when there'd be three to four pithing needle effects on the board. Right. And just no one could do anything. Yeah, but the PO deck's a little bit more linear. They mostly yes, just do their things and don't interact. Yeah, I, I don't think they're even playing pithing needles anymore. Right. Yeah, they have like Astrolabe witching well in the one drop spot. Interaction is mostly limited to engineered explosives at this point. Yeah. I see some back padding there from Matt Nass. That leads me to believe Josh McLean may have taken down game one, but we will confirm that. M maybe it was a reassuring one. Like yeah, like it'll be okay. Yeah. Could, could go either way with that Should back know pad. better than to speculate on back pats. <laughs> <laughs> no, it turns out I was correct. McLean has won game one. Yeah, needs a little breather there too. Yeah, well, you saw that battlefield. That was intense. All right, Matt. Back to it. Matt's distracted right now. So we're worried about Roshan. Roshan hasn't hit the SCG Tour as hard as some of his compatriots in this top eight. Roshan had a banger of a year, though. Absolutely crushing the GP circuit out of nowhere. And I think he'd be one of those players, if the GP circuit was doing a little bit more feeding into the Pro Tour scene presently, and if the Players Club was still live, this is someone who would probably be in the running for, like, Rookie of the Year type accolades. Sure. Really exploding onto the scene. Maybe picked a bad time to start winning a bunch of GPs, did Roshan, but an impressive player nonetheless. Yeah, I don't know if there's ever a bad time to win GPs. Well, I guess so. But I, I understand what you're saying. He'd probably be sitting at gold or something like that. Yeah. And he's just not reaping those same rewards. Right. Well, and a bit of a rebuilding year is OP. But the first shreds of daylight starting to look pretty promising. So, of course, the SCG Tour are now offering invitations for the winners of our Opens. The winning team this weekend, invitation to the players. What do we call it? Players Championship? Players Tour? Players Tour. Yep. Players Tour. The PT. Yep. That's right. I can just say the PT. Yeah, back on the PT. Invitation to the PT for the winners. The, the RPT, right? Uh, don't, don't complicate things for me, Craig. I've just found something that worked for me. My apologies. I, I heard that somewhere. I, I think you're mostly right. But yeah, and I, I, just, I was trying to sound smart, but yeah. I, I don't even know what it no, means. No, there, there are two levels to the PT now, uh, but the RPT is much closer to the old PT or the old Mythic Championship than it is to an RPTQ. All right, then what's not similar to that? The level above that. The Hardcore PT, I believe, is what it's called. They call it the Hardcore PT. Well, that's what I call it. They definitely don't call it that. But Do they have the wrestling announcer? They do. This is where they bust yeah. out the wrestling announcer that you've been asking for. The Super PT. We do have our first result from this match we're watching there. You see a two next to Zan Syed's name. Just took down the Legacy match. Two games to zero. Zan Syed over Andrew Beckstrom. Nia Loam over Teamer Delver. And I think that Nia Loam deck came to fruition to prey on those Teamer Delver decks. Yes. Yep. Meanwhile, over in this game, Gilded Goose for Matt Nass, assisted by a Once Upon a Time. Yeah, that Once Upon a Time has been... I mean, I, I always knew it would be good, but it's been particularly impressive out of his deck where the turn one Goose is so important. Yeah. Four copies of Once Upon a Time for Ness. Zero copies for Batarioni. If I have a real gripe 
with the fires list. I think there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here. But once upon a time, man, have you, have you seen that card? It is a free cantrip that goes five cards deep. I'm having a hard time passing that one up. I understand why. I understand why Jeremy made that decision. But you're going to have to pry my once upon a times out of my cold, dead hands. Questing Beast is the play for Matt Nass on turn three. This is the playbook. Get aggressive. Do it fast. Yep. Tari only going to fall to 16. Four mana available, though. Yeah, it just feels like a world of difference seeing the, the, the play and play draw. draw. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Another Beanstalk Giant in hand for Batarioni. Zan has now popped in over the shoulder, having won his match. Step one, Fires of Invention. First time we've seen that on the battlefield for Jeremy. Going to go ahead and cast a Beanstalk Giant. It resolves. Go get our fifth land. And that's it for spells. We know that. Yeah, hopefully Jeremy has a, a land drop to make here. We will see. Going to pass on that forest. Uh, alt U. Uh, passes the turn. Back to Matt Ness. Alt, alt U was the undo command on Moto. Oh, I use... Uh, do I have that binded still to Alt U? I've changed a lot of my bindings to be on my mouse. Sure. So I don't, I don't even recognize the ones that are on the keyboard anymore. I think it's just... Is it Z on uh, Arena? It, it is Z on okay. Arena, yes. And yeah, no land drop. Well, that's a point of weakness. <laughs> well, Matt now has to decide how much to commit to the battlefield. You have to think he kept this hand. Double Beanstalk Giant, Fires of Invention. There's got to be a payoff for that, Fires. Fay of Wishes can go get Time Wipe from the sideboard. How much do you want to commit to the battlefield at this point? Something like Nissa would be great. It's it, kind of a soft committal. Yes. Oh, a Planeswalker is very good here. Uh, you know, potentially a Counterspell of some sort would be good. Mm -hmm. Because you know Jeremy's got all action over there. It, once that deck misses a land drop. Right. You got to be prepared for the Fave Wishes or Golos and another powerful spell backing it up as well. I think so. Double Gilded Goose is the play from Matt Nass. Followed up by Brazen Barrer. Bounce Fires of Invention. Okay. I like this. Yeah, I like this a lot too. I've played a bunch against Fires of Invention on Arena. Messing with their tempo. Really good idea. Anytime you can cast them one of cost them one of their spells in a turn, you're generally incentivized to do so. Yeah, this was just a time walk. Deafening Clarion in hand for Batario, and he's gonna be able to clean up all three of those gilded gooses if he so chooses. But it's gonna be Golos instead. Makes sense to me. I don't know, it's kind of an interesting line. I guess. Yeah, I guess if the plan is next turn potentially to, to wish with the fires and just clean up the board that way, especially if it's a time wipe, you get to rebuy your Golos. Mm -hmm. I can see taking this turn off to do this. And Jeremy went to get Boros Guildgate. Interesting. D so does that complete his Wooberg? I think he already had it. I think he already had Wooberg. Right? Temple of Epiphany, Selesnia Guildgate, Plains Island Swamp. Yeah. I already had it. So what does that tell us? It tells us something, Craig. There's something we're supposed to take away from that. Double Clarion? But he's got Fires. That doesn't... I mean, you can play around Fires getting bounced again. I don't know what to make of that. Yeah, it's possible when the, the, the turn passes back to him, this will reveal itself. I am curious. 
Here's another attack from Questing Beast. And Nass reaching for some mana. Yeah, this is extra tough for Nass. He has to know there's a real possibility that he just loses his board next turn. Anything could happen. Batarioni could go get Casualties of War. Could get a Time Wipe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Planar Cleansing in the sideboard for Batarioni. Just so many options. It seems like Time Wipe's the most likely of them. I think so. And I, I think part of Matt's decision-making process here is that he can deploy that ferry from its adventure mm -hmm. and still have pressure on the board when the turn comes back to him if there's a time wipe that gets played. All right. Nass agonizing over this decision. I mean, this could be his whole tournament. Not only his whole tournament, his teammates whole tournament on this decision. Yeah, you're putting a lot of pressure on him there. Hey, look, that's why we play magic to get into these situations to have to shine in high pressure circumstances, carry our teammates to victory. Ness, Hydroid Crisis for four is the play. Draws two, gains two life. Forest, additional Hydroid Crisis was the draw. And, and this is why he didn't use all of that mana. Had another play in mind already. Makes sense. Fires of Invention back to Bertarioni's hand. And now we get to see what Patarioni had in store. What was the deal with that Boros Guildgate? Looks like step one, cast Deafening Clarion. This makes sense now, Craig. Setting up for the possibility of having to cast two Deafening sure. Clarions yeah, in one it, turn? Yep. It, it's funny because this has revealed itself. And that makes this a really nice piece of foresight from Batarioni. Yeah, just super heads up play. Golos coming through on the attack. Deafening Clarion number two. So yeah, last turn what Jeremy asked himself was, you know, how do I lose this game? If the turn comes back to me and I get to, to Fae of Wishes with this Fires of Invention on the board, mm -hmm. I'm going to win. What if that doesn't happen? Right. Well played from Batarioni. But Nass has the perfect reload. It's Krasis for four again. Two fresh cards in hand, passes the turn back. Batarioni also crucially gained three life from that life-linking attack. Yep. From the Golos. Really nice turn from Batarioni. Yeah, just tons of value there. Yeah, if he's still at eight life, he has to worry about the, the crazes in the air, along with potentially a questing beast. Mm -hmm. Now Batarioni has his own crisis, and it's slightly larger. Five is the number for that Hydroid Crisis. Field of the Dead, here comes a zombie. It'd be very easy to pass over that decision to grab Boros Guildgate, but I wanna just take a moment and go back to it. It's such careful, thoughtful magic. It's decisions like that Great when play. I lose yeah, games. Yeah, really impressive play. It's so easy to shortcut there and do the usual thing and grab a Field of the Dead. Yep. Now the turn back to Ness. Here's a Paradise Druid. And this is the scaling problem. This is where this deck just starts to get outscaled. Yep. By Golos. And Ness needs to cobble something together here. And that's what these wins do feel like. They feel like they're cobbled together. Ness has been doing it. One of the best Magic players in the world. Certainly nobody better suited to do so than Matt Ness. But... One well, uphill battle. We said what a difference the play draw makes. Mm -hmm. When that questing beast comes down and it's the only thing on the board, you know it's going to get in for eight, maybe 12 damage, and that is huge. Right.
The whole squad is here now, everyone weighing in on the next play from Batarioni. Yeah, and, and it just feels to me like he's going to just have awesome plays every turn for the rest of this game because he missed a couple of land drops in those early turns and just had a full grip. So now we're at the point where he has the lands to cast whatever he wants, so he still has gas. Well, now the grip has gotten even fuller. It's time for Krasis for six. Three more cards to Bertarioni's hand. Field of the Dead already on the battlefield. And his life total was eight. Yeah. These decks are absurd, Craig. They are truly absurd. They can do some incredible things. And maybe we are looking at the next evolution of the Golos archetype in the hands of Jeremy Bertarioni. Well, and, and it's really impressive to me seeing the Deafening Clarion leveraged on so many levels. So we, we've seen him make very heads-up plays all day, both attacking with his Ami army and then using the Deafening Clarion to, to kill off blockers that normally couldn't be destroyed with three damage. Mm -hmm. We've seen the lifelink be very important. Just, just a lot of heads-up, very impressive plays out of him. Agreed. Nass going to go ahead and deploy Brazen Borrower. Batarioni's end step draws for the turn. It's just a boring old forest. How boring. Now it feels like the deck is starting to get stacked very hard against Nass. Yeah. If the door wasn't slammed shut already, top decking a, a forest there definitely does it. There's one additional card in hand for Nass. I think it's an Aether Gust. I'm not 100% sure on that. <laughs> the either gust against the crisis. Right. Not what you want to be Not doing. the ideal answer. Looks like Nass checking in with his teammates game here. Simultaneously trying to figure out the puzzle. That is the opposing Golos deck. Yeah, and I think Nass is doing kind of, a, I guess almost the opposite of what Bertarioni did the other turn, but a, a very similar thing where instead of how do I lose this game, he's thinking, is there a series of cards that I can draw to win this game? Right. And if there is, how do I have to position myself in order to take advantage of that? Right. Great players always playing towards their outs. Matt Nass is doing the same, I'm sure. But Batarioni's grip just loaded right now. To say nothing of the fact that there's a six power and a five power crisis already on the battlefield, accompanied by some zombies. And checking in, trying to ensure these last few turns are navigated properly. You don't want to leave any window for your opponent. Cross your T's, dot the I's. Always play perfectly. That is the Magic Player's MO. Those Beanstalk Giants still just chilling on their adventure ready to come down and be irrelevant at any point in time. <laughs> Patarioni says, you know what? It's time to swing. Let's go. Everything heads into the red zone. And he says, show me what you got, Matt. Yeah, and I, I was wondering if this was a turn where it, it's funny, but possibly Bertarioni was so far ahead, he wouldn't even want to attack this turn. Mm-hmm. If that can make some sense. Just push your advantage. Yeah, just, just draw a million more cards or get the fires on the board and set yourself up to win on the next turn and not be exposed to any possible ridiculous thing out of the opponent. Yeah, I think if he's making this attack, he's just counted everything and realizes it doesn't leave him exposed to anything. Sure. Looks like Nass going to cast that second Brazen Borrower that's out on an adventure.
is. There is Borrower. We lining up some double blocks here. Yeah, you got to answer that problem eventually. Yep. Still a whole host of damage coming Nass's way. Hydroid Crisis, of course. An avid trampler. Avid trampler. Just like I'm an avid hiker. Sure. Crisis, avid trampler. Can't get enough of it. Right. That That is one of the lines of text on that card that gets forgotten the most. Avid. No, no, Brian, the trample. Oh, no, my mistake. It doesn't actually say avid on the card. Oh. Just been in reading that this whole time myself, huh? Yeah, I think that's, yeah, just something you added onto the card yourself. Well, I keep things interesting. And the blocks have gone through. A crisis has been answered. Zombies off the battlefield. But I have a feeling that Batarioni is not done. What do you know? I was right. Yeah, there's always more zombies, right? Golos coming down. Bet Golos about to go looking for another Field of the Dead. Two more zombies. I have our first result from another match, Craig. And it is the team of Sasser, Fearer, and Allen moving on to our top four. That Sultai Golo stack continuing to do work in the hands of Zach Allen. One, well, we, we've been talking about our points race moving towards the end of the year here. And you, you know Donegan really wanted to pick up a W in this event. Well, not, not to cut you off, Craig, and not to bury the lead, but uh, that Golos was enough for Matt Nass. Yep. He is going to go ahead and pick up his cards, and that means we now have a second result, and it sees.